So I really want to thank you, uh, Dana, for joining us today to talk about ClearPath. This is the first time that we are doing this information session and partnering with ClearPath. As Dana and I were speaking about uh, previously, um, she had sent um, an opportunity. I was very intrigued to learn more about ClearPath and help our students understand your work. So I am really thrilled to offer this program today with our students. And with that, Dana, I'm going to turn it over to you. Yeah, thanks so much, Denise, and thanks for having me, and thanks everybody for um, coming to the session today to learn more about uh, ClearPath and who we are and what we do. Um, my name is Dana Fodd. I am the director of the Conservative Climate Leadership Program here at ClearPath. Um, you'll learn a little bit more about what that means. Um, if you hear me saying CCLP, that's kind of our acronym for our program. It's a little bit of a mouthful, so I usually prefer to use the acronym, but um, I was going to go over today just kind of clear path, who we are, what we do, and then um, kind of the, the program that I run specifically is for emerging professionals and, and young people. So I um, am going to cover a little bit about what those roles look like within uh, ClearPath and kind of the opportunities that we have available um, for people who are kind of early in their career. Um, so you'll see up on the screen, this is our mission. Um, it's pretty clear, concise mission. We actually just kind of revamped it a little bit to make it more um, direct, but our mission is to accelerate American innovation to reduce global energy emissions. Um, it's our vision and the vision of our founder that America leads the world in addressing climate change by developing innovative market competitive clean energy technologies. So we are very big on innovation, not regulation. We really believe that America um, ingenuity is what is going to solve and combat climate change. Uh, we are working diligently to try to get to net zero and meet those needs. We know that it, it, it's past the time, right, to, to get to that point. Um, we've already kind of passed the threshold, so we really need to be scaling these technologies um, that are going to reduce emissions. We need to be scaling them up, and we need to be doing it faster um, so that we can combat um, emissions. A little bit about us and kind of our structure and who we are. We have 41 full-time employees with over 70 years of combined Hill experience, um, policy experience, expertise from the executive brands, trade associations, NGOs, and industry. Um, we have advisors that are Senate confirmed. Um, so we have a, a former head of CEQ, a DOE undersecretary. We have two former members of Congress um, on our, our board. Um, a really great board who's supportive of us and, and the mission and, and really, really cares greatly and deeply um, about reducing emissions and getting us to net zero. Um, we've testified in 19 congressional hearings in the last three years, so um, basically providing witness testimony uh, to different hearings uh, for bills and things that are coming through Congress. We have a very deep bench of policy experts here at ClearPath that are very knowledgeable on these issues, and we've very uh, rapidly in the last 10 years become kind of the go-to uh, place uh, for experts in certain fields. Uh, I'm going to go over and talk about some of the issue areas that we cover, some of the technologies that are in our portfolios. Um, I'll go over those in a little bit more in depth in just a second. So these are um, our policy pillars, um, power, industrial, carbon management. Uh, you can kind of see where all of those technology lives. So we work on nuclear, battery storage, carbon capture, hydropower, natural gas, geothermal is in our power sector. Our industrial sector is concrete, metals, like steel, for example, steel making, hydrogen, and carbon capture. And then our carbon management portfolio is direct air, carbon removal, hybrid CDR. We have ag and natural solutions in there as well. We do also have um, policy areas, so for federal research and development, demonstration programs, deployment incentives, ecosystem regulatory reform. Um, that's kind of like our permitting portfolio, our tax portfolio, finance portfolio. Um, we work on critical minerals and, um, and geothermal as well. So we, we have a very broad base of different technology areas that we focus on. Um, the number one question I get when people see this slide is, 
Uh, what about wind and solar and transportation, EVs? We don't work on those issue areas simply because um, the industry is, is very saturated with folks that are already working on those technologies and, and reducing emissions in, in those areas. Um, so we focus kind of on the underrepresented technology areas uh, that, um, that represent emissions as well. So ClearPath is kind of built differently than your typical DC organization. We um, oftentimes you'll find a, a place that's a lobbying shop, a government affairs shop. Um, you'll have a communications PR firm, communications firm, and then you'll also have like a think tank, right? Those are three different, uh, very different kinds of organizations here in DC. We're kind of all three. Um, we have a, a policy team with a deep bench of policy experts, a lot of them who um, science is their background. So we have um, nuclear engineers on staff, we have PhDs on staff who have really dedicated their life's work to studying the science behind these technologies. Um, they are our policy experts. They are the ones um, crafting legislation, making recommendations to bills, um, submitting questions for congressional hearings, and those are often also the witness uh, policy experts that we put forth during congressional hearings. Um, they're kind of our think tank people. Um, our strategic communicators, we have a, an external affairs team that focuses on media relations, that focus on um, kind of getting our messaging out to the public, uh, figuring out and trying to put to the forefront some of these technologies and what their missions are and what they can do. Um, they are the people that are running our social media accounts. They're also the ones who are doing outreach and getting our policy experts on panels and getting them out in front of the public so that they can learn more about these um, technology areas. And then we do have a government affairs team that helps um, get this legislation to the Hill. They present it to offices, they educate um, staffers on some of these issues and, and help them understand why it's relevant to them and why it's relevant to their districts and to their constituents. Um, they help educate them on the technologies that are out there that they might not be aware of, um, even in their state. So we kind of have a full uh, team of people that are kind of working cross-cutting uh, to, to make us a whole organization where we can um, operate um, pretty independently. We don't have, you know, we don't have to do a lot of contracting out because we've got a full shop um, here. We also do grantees, so we also will um, do grants for research. Uh, we work with higher uh, education um, places. We, for MIT, for example, is one that we will, um, you know, give money and grants to for research and development if if it's relevant to the work that we're doing um, as part of that to help advance that research and development. Our approach to policy and legislation, um, we like to live in the middle of this Venn diagram, um, something that's legislatively realistic, that's politically sustainable, and that solves the global emissions problem, right? Like we're, we're really trying to live in the middle of that. Um, we don't spin our wheels. We don't try to push through legislation that's not going to have bipartisan support. Um, we want to make sure that it's going to be sound legislation that's actually going to do something and that's going to be a positive result um, that's good for the environment and, and for, the, for the mission of reducing emissions. Um, we want it to be politically sustainable. We want to be able to get it through Congress. We want it to be able to be passed with bipartisan support, ideally. Um, and then also, of course, we want it to be effective, right? We want it to solve the global emissions problem. So, that's kind of where we like to live. We do work mostly with Republican offices, um, but we do every bill that we bring forth and that we try to get sponsored, we try to get sponsored bipartisan. So we do usually have a Democrat and a Republican co-sponsor of bills um, to live in that kind of politically sustainable, re legislative, realistic realm. Um, Traditionally, Republicans have been kind of behind the eight ball when it comes to climate and energy policy. 
we're hoping to help um, kind of close that gap, really educating members and staff on these issue areas, showing them the technologies that, that need to be scaled up in order to help um, combat emissions and really showing them the benefit of, um, it's not about just about reducing emissions, it's about creating jobs and staying competitive on the world stage with China and Russia. Becoming a leader um, in reducing emissions is super important um, to America. And that's kind of um, kind of the, the, the way we approach things with a lot of the members that we work with. This is just a really quick sampling of some of the um, energy policy that we've had a hand in. You can kind of see these um, different um, the bills that we've worked on and um, some of the research and development that's been supported as part of our initiatives. Um, we've worked on uh, nuclear legislation. We've worked on um, carbon capture. We've worked on research and development, supply chains. Chips and Science Act was a big one for us. And then we've also kind of focused on tax incentives for new electricity, clean electricity, um, and supply chain. So um, we've kind of had a hand on a lot in the last um, in the last few years. This is um, a slide that shows our pillars, our values. Um, these are things that we hold up. They're posted all around our office of why we do what we do and how we do it. Um, these are the pillars that we hold up um, as examples of who we as employees of Clear Path should be and the, the traits that we should be exhibiting. Um, we take them pretty seriously. Every um, retreat, somebody is selected in each of these categories as being an outstanding representation of these values. Um, so it's always really fun um, at our retreats to kind of see who's been chosen um, for each of these values. But these are things that our leadership team really feels strongly about. And it's something that we really take into consideration when we're hiring folks and bringing them onto our team. Uh, we take it really seriously, hiring and making sure that people are the right fit. You know, we're a 40 person outfit. We're still relatively small. So it is really important that um, everyone on the team is on the same page and pulling their weight and exhibiting these kinds of values. So it's something that we really, um, we really hold, hold up. I wanted to just quickly go over um, our opportunities that we have at ClearPath. I was brought on about a year and a half ago to really um, make an investment in the younger generation and emerging professionals um, in the energy policy space. Um, the Conservative Climate Leadership Program, um, there's been a shortage of young people who are interested in energy policy, um, who want to work in Republican offices and who want to work in, in the conservative space. So this is something that um, we really have over the last year and a half really kind of bolstered up, um, starting from the ground up, right? Starting from internships. I was just telling Denise before we got on, um, we actually currently have an undergraduate um, GW student with us for the semester who's doing an internship for 20 hours a week with us. Um, he's working in our GA portfolio and helping us with a lot of our um, government affairs initiatives. Um, our internships, they're summer and semester available. They are mostly undergraduates, but we do actually have a graduate level student who's with us this semester. So it's kind of just whatever the right fit is. We're open to folks who are pursuing their grad degree, especially if you're in the city and you um, want to do 20 hours a week while you're working towards your master's degree. We think that's great. Um, you would work here at Clear Path in our DC headquarters. We have a, an office on Capitol Hill, um, right on C Street and Capitol Hill. Um, and you get a really great introduction to energy policy, Washington DC in general, and just getting to kind of deep dive. So right now we have um, three interns with us for the semester. One is working in our external affairs uh, department and she is working on the messaging um, and she's working on media relations, our social media accounts, um, kind of everything that has to do with the communications branch of ClearPath. Um, our GW student, he is working in our government affairs 
um, department. He is uh, really learning the ins and outs of what our GA team does and how they bring legislation to the Hill, how they interact with Hill offices, how they help educate um, staff within um, Congress. And so he's really getting a, a pretty, uh, I would think, a pretty exciting education um, in kind of that space uh, this semester. And then we also have a policy um, intern for this semester. She is working in our international uh, and nuclear portfolio. So she is helping our nuclear team and, and our international team um, with deep diving into some um, technology exploration, um, international finance um, tracking. She's doing a lot um, on the nuclear front. So she's getting a, a really good education in nuclear this semester. Our fellowships, our internal fellowships are uh, kind of the next step in the process. They are a one-year commitment. They are reach, recent graduates and graduate level folks who are interested in getting a deeper dive in energy policy. Um, we have three fellows that are currently on staff with us right now. Um, one is working in our nuclear portfolio. One is working in our permitting and geothermal portfolio. And the other is working in our DOE tax and critical minerals portfolio. Um, so it, it's really based on what your interest is. We try to fit you into kind of the technology area that you want to get a deeper um, experience in. That's not to say we don't let you kind of work across the portfolios if you're interested. We really encourage exploration of all the different technologies, especially when you're early in your career and you don't know quite what you want to do yet. We like to give you kind of a general education as well. Um, those are work, those uh, fellows work with us again for one year in person in our um, Washington DC headquarters and you're really getting an immersion in clear past research and policy making. The next step after that uh, is the congressional fellowships. They are a one-year commitment. They are recent graduates and early career candidates. So they can be recent graduates from either undergrad or grad school, or they can be folks who maybe have gone out to the working world for a couple of years and who are looking to make a change or a shift um, into the policy world. They are sponsored placements on Capitol Hill. Sponsored placements meaning we pay the salary of the fellow for the entire year, and they work on that office, in that office on Capitol Hill. You're really gaining a deep experience in um, Congress, how things work, how legislation is passed, um, kind of the inner workings of Congress for that year. Currently, we have six fellows on Capitol Hill. We have two at the Senate Western Caucus. We have two in personal offices, one's in a senator's office, one's in a, in a um, representative's office. Um, we have a fellow at the Conservative Climate Caucus, and we have a fellow at the House Science, Space, and Tech Committee. So they a uh, wide range of different um, kinds of offices, but they're all getting experience on Capitol Hill as part of that placement. Um, you don't have to follow this pathway. This is kind of the pathway that we've kind of created to for folks who are interested who start at the internship level and work their way up through. But um, certainly we've had people who have just come on and done congressional fellowships. We've had people who just have come on and done internal fellowships with us. Um, it's not like a, you have to start at the path and go up. You can kind of plug in where you are. Um, but this is kind of a, a nice funnel and a way to think about uh, the journey um, going forward in your career. Again, this is kind of a deep dive on the congressional fellowships. Um, these are some of the benefits of the congressional fellowship you're contributing to clean energy technology policy analysis research data collection um, as part of that. So every office that we place in is a Republican office or committee. Um, and you it's the understanding that you will be working on technology, um, energy, or climate in some regard. Um, that's not to say you wouldn't be working on other things as well, but you'd at least have some component of the energy um, policy. Um, 
the professional development that we offer as part of the program, it's a supplement to the experience on Capitol Hill. Um, we offer panel discussions. We sponsor you to go to different conferences to expand your knowledge base within the energy space. Um, we offer networking events for fellows um, to build your network within DC and within the energy space and on Capitol Hill. Um, the panels that we offer and the speakers that we offer, it's an education within the energy sector. So it's educational opportunities to help further your knowledge set within the energy sector. And then when your fellowship concludes, part of what we do is we go through an exercise of helping you figure out what's next, right? To figure out um, how we can be helpful. We have a large network within the energy space here in DC and on Capitol Hill. So how can we help you find what your next step is um, for full-time employment, whether that be in the private sector, whether that be at an agency or whether that be on Capitol Hill, um, how can we be helpful in that space? So we start those conversations um, a couple months before a fellowship concludes just to be um, on top of what's next for our fellows. This is just my contact information. I think we have about eight minutes. If I, I'm happy to, to entertain questions if anybody has anything for me. Um, Denise, I don't know how you regulate questions, but um, happy to happy to answer anything that anybody has and want, wants me to talk about more in depth. Sure. Um, we had one question that came in that was uh, other job opportunities for international graduate students who require visa sponsorships? Yeah, um, we can do internships as long as you stay on your visa for school. We are not currently sponsoring visas. Um, and obviously Capitol Hill, it's a lot trickier. We can't do placements um, for international folks on Capitol Hill just yet. Um, but internships certainly would be an opportunity. I don't have any other questions in the in the chat right now. Does anybody want to? Um, oh, here's another question. Um, mm -hmm. For professionals and SM beyond one to four years of experience, wanting to know if they can continue a conversation with you um, with any if they have some interest. Yeah, sure. My contact information's on here. I'm also on LinkedIn, happy to connect there. That's a great space. Um, if you wanna shoot me an email, happy to answer questions that way or um, schedule a time to chat. Um, we actually have some current applications that are open on our website. That's also a great way to do it. Um, we have applications, I think, live right now for our congressional fellowship. We also have a general application. So we like to just keep a bank of people who are interested in what we do. So you can submit your resume to that. And as stuff opens up, we um, contact people out of that um, out of that space. So that might be a, a really great way to submit your resume and get on my radar. Any other, oh, it says someone wants to know if winter or spring internships might also be offered. Both. We have um, uh, currently, right now, we're doing like fall. So our interns that are here right now are going to be with us till the end of the semester, so till December. And then we'll be starting new interns in January, from January until May. And then we'll do like a June to August summer internship. So three kind of opportunities for internships. And the posting for the spring will be going live in the next month. Great questions. Anything else? Okay. Well, great. Thank you guys so much for coming. I really appreciate the opportunity to get to speak to you. Happy to answer any questions. Like I said, my email is here. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. Denise, I'm sure you know how to reach me too. Um, <laughs> if you have anybody that is interested, I'm happy to speak more. Thank you so much, Dana. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thanks, guys.